you just said you don't care what the future father of your children thinks about you right now. <laughs> at what I'm disaster. Doing at 21 on my Instagram? No, honey. I don't. <laughs> at 21. So she's directly between 18 and 23, was it, which is at the prime of her fertility, and she doesn't care what she's doing. You see what I'm saying, guys? When women are in the 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 what's it called? The rock star phase, they don't care. They're just doing whatever. But the problem is this. Past behavior is the best indicator of future behavior. No man wants to be with a girl that every other man has had. No man wants to be with a girl that's every guy, every guy's girl. So, gigantic red flag. Don't care. <laughs> my husband, my husband. And notice how all these girls in the crowd are all agreeing. Uh, is not worried about what I'm posting on my story right now, so are you? Yeah, and even the guy agrees. I'm not worried. I don't want to fucking have kids with you. You want to have kids on Instagram, so goddamn no. But the guy that you have kids with, you should be concerned about what you're doing right now because your past does matter. Your past matters. Because again, past behavior is the best indicator of future behavior. So you can use the past to predict the future. That's the literal that's literally why humanity that's why humanity is so successful because we build on the past. So to say that a girl's past doesn't matter is utterly ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. You're right. And the guy that you want will care about that. That's something you need to wake he up to. He will care. Okay. So again, a man cares about a woman's past. A woman cares about a man's future. That's the idea. Can you go, can you go in the past? Can I go in the past? Well, can anybody go into the past? Your past reflects your future. Well, when she finds the man, they're going to build a better future. Okay, for but her. when right she's 27... Sure. Yeah, when she's 27, 28, she's going to find a beta male. But no man with self-respect is going to want to commit to a girl that every other man has had. The town bicycle is not the man, uh, sorry, it's not the woman that men want to marry. Okay, maybe a guy with no self-respect will do it. So these are the girls that are like, I've had my fun and now I'm ready to settle down, right? And you have to be the guy to settle down with her. You know, you have to be the guy that, you know, marry a garden tool that sleeps with you like a prude. Like, no, we're not out here doing that, guys. And which is going to be 35 when she decides that she wants to settle down, when she gives up on her, like going out of the clubs, being 21 and hot. When she gives up on that, she's going to realize that the guy that she really wants to be with is going to care about her past. And then she's going to be That's sad right. she's going to blame men and she become a lesbian. But in reality, <laughs> the guy that you want is going to care about what you're doing right now. And you saying right now you're live on this stream that it doesn't matter what I do from 21 to 27 is a red flag for any guy that wants to wife you up or would wife, wife you up. Literally. That's exactly right. Any guy that would be interested in being with a girl, make sure that you know what she was doing when she was younger. Oh, and there's more. If she... Okay, think about it this way. If before, all you had to do was take her on a walking date or a coffee date and then you could sleep with her, why do you, the new guy, have to take her on a $200 dinner date? You don't. If she requires that you take her on a dinner date, while every other guy could take her on a walking date and sleep with her, then you are the beta and those guys were the alpha. You're the second best and you'll always be. Hello and welcome to Hedius Blog. My name is Hedius here for another reaction video. If you're new to the channel, like in the content, hit that sub, hit all for notifications. If you'd like to support me, I do have a Patreon with exclusive content, newly revamped, patreon.com slash the Hedius Blog. Just go there and subscribe, guys. Uh, you could also drop me a donation like Tom M here. Link is in the description. Shoutouts to him. Uh, let's continue. That well, was easy. Care about the girl's I, don't ass. Think, I think the version of her right now shouldn't matter to her future husband. It, 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 False. Look, look, look. You can see Myron looking at the camera. It doesn't matter what it that's should or shouldn't do. It does. It just does. But when the time comes that she does meet her husband, yeah, be transparent. Let him know the life you were living at this age. Whoa. But at that time, when you do meet him, the version of you now, the wife you are that's when you marry him, that, that present day, that's what matters. Not what you were doing when you were Let me ask one. the ladies a question. That's totally BS and cap. You need to control your behaviors in order to... Okay. Girlfriend is interview for, her, for for wife. If you fail the interview, you never become wife. How do you fail the interview? You failed all the past interviews, right? If you've been to 20 interviews and none of the guys took you, the 21st guy isn't going to take you either because they know that in the past, 
there must be a reason why you weren't taken by any of the previous guys. Right? That's called social proof. Women have social proof based on their past behavior. Here, so I can kind of get a gauge of the female's knowledge of how men think real fast. Do you think you're more attractive right now, or let's say six years from now? We'll start here and then work away. Okay. Right now. Okay. Well. <laughs> no. Men get better with age, generally. As long as you know you you eat properly, you're taking care of yourself, you're exercising, you're keeping yourself strong and confident and powerful. Um. Yeah. Men get better with age. Women, as they get older, they become less competitive, less attractive. And of course, there is a limit to men as well. It's just a longer limit, right? Like, let's say men past 45 are much less attractive than like a 20-year-old man, right? Um, you know, because as a man, you can make yourself attractive with other stuff too. So you can be physically fit and then also be confident, charismatic, dress well, smell good, have money, you know, have friends, have a life built, have, you know, all kinds of things, right? For a girl, as you get older, like women's bedroom fun is their primary agency, which means their looks are the primary agency. As women age, their looks fade much faster than men. So, like, of course, the value drops down. Look at uh, Rolo's uh, SMV uh, graph for reference. What about you? Right now, I guess. Okay. What about you? All of them are going to say the same thing. It's the hive mind. You have to say what all the other girls say. Right now? Right. Um, honestly, six years ago, I didn't look that fine. So No, I'm saying six considering... years in the future. Do you think you're more attractive to a potential man now or six years in the future from now? Um... <laughs> Very simple. It's not my prime, so. Oh my God. I don't know. It's just no accountability. Yes, yes or no? Just, just yes. skip her, bro. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say, okay, yeah. What does that mean? That means she knows the truth. Is she's too afraid. Her saying, okay, yeah. She knows what the truth is, but she's too afraid to say. That's why she's like, okay, yeah. It means I know I'm not done, like, reaching my potential. Yeah. Oh my. This is a masculine idea, right? Again, they don't understand that when they're 18 to 23 is their peak fertility, right? And their peak agency and their peak chance to get a man. They don't understand that. Clearly, right? Because womanism is lied to these girls, right? Uh, you think you'll be more maybe, attractive six years from now then? Yes, maybe. Okay. All right, cool. Okay. What about you? I kind of agree. <laughs> you think you'll be more no, attractive sure. six years from now? It depends on like what aspect you mean of attraction. <laughs> okay. Like what you got. Here we go. General, two oh, men. Look, do look you at think you'll be more attractive now? Or six years from now, looks wise. Looks wise? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. okay. What about you? Yeah, no. I think in six years I'll be hot. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Yes, but will you be more attractive then or less? Even if you're still attractive, you'll be less attractive than now is the point. Okay. If you look at the statistics for online dating, if you see the age that men primarily, like what age primarily they want women at, you'll get an idea for when women's prime fertility and prime uh, attractiveness is, and it's at the age of 22. What about you? I say now. You think now? 30, okay. 30, Smart. I was six, six years now. Like, okay. No way. You? I mean, I think in six years, because I'll be 25. So. Okay, realistically <laughs> speaking, so this... Yeah, so if she's 19 now, maybe, right? Uh, but, but like, um, uh, yeah, yeah, may maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, but that's, that's because she's still in her, you know, prime years, right? So that, that, that one actually might be true. But um, in general, if you're past the age of 24, you're already on the decline as a girl in terms of your prime, your peak agency. This was uh, really good to get this exercise out the way because it really shows that women are, have no clue that your youth is a big part of your beauty. And um, big there's part. a reason why plastic surgery exists and women do Botox shots, etc. And uh, makeup as well. Um, yeah, makeup and uh, filters and dyed hair and uh, all of that. All of that is because it, it aims to make women more attract, uh, look more youthful is, is the point. When women do surgery nine out of 10 times or dress in a certain way or go to the gym, it's typically to push the clock back to look more youthful because That's women right. know deep down, makeup takes away wrinkles, 
women typically want to look more youthful because that makes them more attractive. That's what men are attracted to. But even her, who belongs to Instagram, she knows that she's more attractive at 21 than 27. Yeah. So, so you're, you're, is... she's willing to give away her youth to Instagram to take the time to find yeah, the man that she wants to be with. She's giving up her life and her, her youth and her beauty for Instagram instead of finding yeah. a real relationship. Yeah. It is what it is. It's true. No, that, that that's right. And actually, many, many girls choose to do that in 2023. Um, they They care more about their options than they care about you. So you to them are nothing, right? Because what, like, you as the man in the hand, let's, let's say, as the boyfriend, you can't possibly give her 10,000 messages a day. You can't fly her out to Dubai. You can't, I mean, you, you, you see what I'm saying? That's the point. The point is that these social media apps are so destructive for long-term relationships. Basically, these apps are um they're like suck you by right they drain your essence for the purpose of their own gain but you think it's for your gain that's the idea okay uh, on to the article by uh roto tomasi here beta f i had an interesting experience last friday i finished a good workout and was on my way home when baby tomasi texted me and asked if if i would pick up a sandwich for from subway to bring to a school thing sure why not I go to the local subway at around 6.30 p.m. and it being a Friday night and subway isn't the most happening place to be on Friday. I'm there with only a couple ahead of me in line. The woman looked at me and she was in her late 20s, I guess 27, 28 and not too bad looking. 5 foot 9, 5 foot 10 blonde. If she'd been dressed better, she might rate a 7 on the Tomasi scale. The guy she was with was thin, short mop of hair, about the same height, maybe around her age. What made them notable was the gender dynamic between them I picked up on immediately. Within the first three minutes of coming up from behind them in line, the guy had made every beta tell I could think, uh, every beta tell uh, I, could, I could think about. When I got in line, he was hugging up on her from behind, leaning in, and she stood there like a tree. His posture and body language, as well as his attitude, instantly told me this couple's relationship dynamic. He was the qualifying beta, and she was the mouthy, hard-to-please hyena. She noticed me when I came up. I was the only other person in Subway and I still had my gym clothes on. Some top 40 crap song came on the overhead and she blathered out, I hate this crap music. They should put Metallica or Slayer on. That would be funny. As if she expected the beta to ask the management to switch stations. She gives me a glance as if offering an opening after that comment. I order my daughter's sandwich. No, don't get me a lemonade. It's too syrupy here. Get me a diet Dr. Pepper. She belts out to the beta who's dutifully getting their drinks. A sandwich artist asks her what she'd like on a sandwich. She reaches over and touches my forearm. This might take a while. I'm very choosy, she says to me in her tone. I'm not in a hurry. Sandwiches get made. Beta pays. My girl's sandwich is done at the same time. She's not too choosy. And as alpha girl and beta boy are about to leave, she grabs both their sandwiches and mine by mistake. The subway cashier stops her to tell her to pick up my sandwich. Uh... Remember, we're the only people in the store. Beta puffs a nervous laugh. She looks at me. Oh, sorry. Hands me the bag and holds eye contact just a beat longer than normal. Come on, we gotta go. Beta reaches around her waist and like the cane that pulls a bad actor off stage, they exit. Passive game. I did nothing to actively game this girl. She was gaming herself. I've seen this before. There's a branch of game, I think Roosh mentions it, that speculates that sometimes girls will game themselves and all you need to do is not screw it up. Sometimes less is more. When a woman is already attracted to you, game becomes remaining aware of the indicators, allowing the proper flow and just presuming the sale. I preface today's post with this because it ties in nicely to a particular discussion last week, last week's post sparked. I'll admit being married kind of puts a man in a nothing to lose perspective. A lot of guys like to speculate that a wedding ring makes a man more desirable. It doesn't. If married men are at all attracted to women, it's not due to some fantasy of pre-selection by his wife making him more attractive. It's because generally he's not actively pursuing women. There's a certain power in indifference. You're far more desirable when you aren't qualifying yourself, and no guy is more indifferent than one who knows with all certainty who he'll be sleeping with that evening. However, there's an amplification of attraction and arousal for a more alpha man when a woman is in a relationship with a man she perceives as beta. A similar amplification also becomes heightened when a woman is the focus of one or more beta obuses. The persistent affirmation by and supplication of beta men puts the alpha in the spotlight. A constant atmosphere of beta tension and concern has the effect of pre-selecting that alpha man for a woman. A common complaint many beta men share is being an emotional tampon. Listening com and commiserating her uh, about her asshole boyfriend only to have a desire for him again um, and go sleep with him again. The beta rationalizes this as a moment of weakness for a special girl, but he's unaware that his constant beta affirmations contribute to her attraction. 
As I stated, I wouldn't have had to apply much gain to the subway girl, the beta boyfriend had already done a lot of the heavy lifting. This particular dynamic is something to remember if you're gaming a girl with a boyfriend or a girl who drops a boyfriend disclaimer into casual conversation. A girl's boyfriend may not be the beta this guy was, but if he is, let that form the basis of your game. I should also add that uh, this uh, beta does the lifting dynamic as the root of amogging and running boyfriend destroyer game. You should also be aware of uh, when this tactic is being run on yourself. Husband equals beta. Now, before you think I've gone completely mercenary, this incident made me think of this comment from last week's post. So essentially, I'm reading the last four paragraphs of your, of your essay to read, She married you because you're a provider, not because she was attracted to you. She'll never be as attracted to you as she was to a previous Alpha F. That's a tough pill to swallow, my brother. The issue being, of course, what to do with yourself and with her after you discover you got gamed into that kind of marriage. Here's a tougher pill to swallow. She'll never be as attracted to you as she is of the guy she sees as Alpha after you're married too. In the full interest of disclosure, Lucas had petitioned me earlier about this particular situation being similar to the guy in Saving the Best. What the kid in the subway made me think of was a wondering if he had at one time been relatively alpha enough to attract his dominant woman, or if she perceives him in a good provider role. She certainly fit the script of the 27 to 29 year old woman looking to cash out of the SMP before her attractiveness capital expired, but on the other hand, she wasn't averse to giving a perpetual alpha IOIs right under his nose. It's an interesting passive uh, C star CKing effect. Lucas's musings prompted the question, does an alpha drop in status for a woman once he's committed to monogamy? One common situation I get from newly RP men is that after a few years they find themselves trapped in a bedroom funless marriage or living arrangement and they want to get to know how to get back to that hot monkey bedroom fun they had in the early stages of their relationship. Once they become RP or game aware, they realize that what they are and how they got there. The next question is how to get back. The question is usually along the lines of, help Rolo, I used to be really alpha back in the day, but now my wife sees me as a beta provider. What do I do? Virtually every man on the married man uh, bedroom fun forums looks for a solution uh, for some variant of the situation. But it's the marriage itself and its very nature that predisposes a woman to view her husband as a beta. <clears throat> Hypergamy being what it is, it's alpha F and beta uh, money. If a woman, being the arbiter and deciding with whom she'll pair off with in the long term, has agreed to commit with a man, it would follow that on some level she believes this man will be a provider and parent for her and her future children. So the question then isn't so much about a man backsliding to beta after having been considered alpha enough to sleep with the woman who'd be his wife. That may be, but rather it's the familiarity and provisioning that define marriage which makes a woman consider him a beta provider by default. Dr. Warren Farrell explored this in some, in some kind in his writing. He posited that the familiarity of marriage predisposes women to consider their husbands as family members, thus the concept of bedroom fun with a family member is repelling. This is further complicated by parenthood, when boyfriend becomes husband and then husband becomes daddy, the, famili the family familiarity dynamic makes having bedroom fun less and less appealing. I think there may be something to this, but when you combine it with a fattening and less appealing daddy and mommy, the complex worsens. Thus, any strange outside alpha becomes a stuff of fantasy. After the marriage, sometimes it's just after a few short years, we hear of the bedroom funless husband, fully betaized, begging for bedroom fun. But based on this previous experience with women, what, what should he have been looking for to tip him off? My question is pointed more towards the men who are alpha who get duped. He's referring, of course, to the husband in the Saving the Best post. I'm not in, in, entirely sure most guys, and especially men with a beta mindset, are very receptive to the red flag warnings telegraphed by women. But Deddy makes a good stab at it. One, a guy in that situation should take note of the kinds and types of men she was attracted to or slept with, slept with before. Huge red flag if you're markedly different from those kinds of men. For example, she used to date guys in crappy bands and small-time pro, small pro athletes, but she's taken quite a shine to bed-level business managers and guys with steady jobs, indicating she's changing lanes, going for beta bucks. This woman is for dating, not for marriage. She was, uh, she was a garden tool with other guys, makes you wait, and then when she finally does take the plunge, the bedroom fun is of a, you know, quality. Seems to be putting on an act, a performer on stage. Entitlement mentality surrounding bedroom fun. To her, bedroom fun is a commodity which she uses as a currency for exchange. She expects something in return for giving you bedroom fun. Firmly controls the bedroom fun. Won't do certain things, will have bedroom fun only at certain times. Doesn't like certain bedroom fun acts because only bad girls do that and I don't want you to think I'm a bad girl. Immediately gets up after bedroom fun to expel the stuff because I don't want to get a, you know, uh, closely related to this is that she remains in control of herself during bedroom fun, never seems to be completely free or enjoying herself, always assessing her own performance in your evaluation, wants to move rapidly to commitment, puts out overt and subtle hints that she expects ever increasing investment and commitment in exchange for the bedroom fun she's doling out. 
There are these are pretty good tells that a woman is looking to cash off the SMP with a provider. Okay. <clears throat> and there you go. Back to the video. It is, but that's what she said. Hey, but Yo, looks saying everything. Um, looks saying everything. Well, it's well, they're not, but they're a main thing, and the the man wants your best. He doesn't want, you know, some other guy to have gotten your best, and then now uh, he's getting second best. Goes down from there. That's, that's where it starts. And if you're not attractive, then we don't want to spend time with you. Literally. Yeah, that's because women are only attracted to alpha men, so. Okay. Not, 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 here's the, the hit, thing men, men are able to make up for a lack of aesthetics in other ways women are not for example if a man is unattractive he can make more money have more status have some game have some charisma he can make up for his lack of aesthetics if Chuck a woman crush. is unattractive eh, she's pretty much dead in the water so True. and there's a reason why the makeup industry is a billion dollar industry women understand this and they know fundamentally if they're they don't look good it's going to limit their ability to be to find a suitable mate so going back to what i was saying with you i think the reason why he's saying these things is that um Ladies, you might say that you should be able to accept my past, but the reality is men are not going to accept your past if you have a certain past, if you have a certain type of past. I'll accept your past. Then that's not the that's man cap. for you. Because... Cop. That's right. Anyway. That. What was that? Sorry, <laughs> then that wouldn't be the man for you if you can't accept your past. That's right. Exactly. And the, and the only guys that are men for you, once you've attained a certain past, are men that you're not attracted to and not interested in. That's right. That's exactly right. What if I told you but most why? men have have a point of contention with a woman that might have a past that might be, you know, unfavorable, right. maybe promiscuous Basically, or The whatever. guy that you want has options. So if you have a past that we're not willing to put up with, we can find well, someone else. Well. Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't. No. You do have options. But here's the thing. You're, the, the guys that you want, which are the guys who are competitive and who all men want to be and all women want to be with, they all have options. So you have to compete because there are more attractive women than there are attractive men. Um, like the men that are top tier that all women are interested in, it's much harder to become one of those men than it is for you to be pretty. So you are actually in the ma majority compared to them. That means they by design have more than one girl that are interested in them. No, you don't. Yeah, when you're 27 and you're ran through, you don't have as many options as you think. And right now Absolutely. you're deluded and you're ignorant because you're young and you're outside of Miami. But really, your That's options ready. really wither down as you get older. Ooh, we'll uh, be outside. It's true. <laughs> so, uh, I want to say, ladies, let me let me be very honest with you. Um, being desired is not the same as having men that want to take you seriously. That's I think right. A lot of women exactly. make the cardinal mistake of thinking, I got a bunch of DMs, I got a bunch of guys that want to take me out, etc. I'm getting offers. This does not mean that these men want to commit to you. They want sex from you. They're That's right, exactly. So the, the point is this. Male thirst is ubiquitous. Men want to get laid all the time. And that a man wants to lay you doesn't mean anything, really. It's like saying the sky is blue. Men want to sleep with girls, and they always will. And that will always be true. But that's not the issue. The issue is that you don't want them to lay you, really. You want them to lay you in a committed, monogamous relationship where eventually they provision for you and protect you. That's what you actually want. And the men that are going to want to marry you, to wife you up, as you call it, they don't want to wife up girls that all other men have been with because that guy's paternity is uncertain then. Not the same thing. And no, women have a very bad habit of taking male attention and thinking all of it is positive and, yo, they all want to court me and the reality is no, they just want to fuck you. So right. you might say, oh, no, I'm, I'm still attractive. I can have it, whatever. The man that you want, the guy that's attractive that has options, he's not going to want to wife up a girl that comes with a certain type of past. Women look, that's right. Uh, women look for a man with a future. Man looks for a woman that doesn't have a past. So what he's simply telling you is as you get older, your value goes down. So it's up to you to cash out while you're still up. Right. But wouldn't a real man just accept a woman <laughs> from her past? <laughs> no! A real man is a man with self-respect. A man with self-respect doesn't accept just anything. So why are you... Like, this is the kind of guy that he associates with the feminine, right? He thinks, by agreeing to the feminine, I'll be more attractive to the feminine. And while the girls might be like, yes, we have a male pretender. You're such a great guy. None of them will sleep with you because they know you don't get it. 
No, like, but like, in all honesty, a real man would just worry about the future, right? No! No! Not a good man with self-respect. So why would he worry depends. about the past? The thing is that that's what we with. should all be focused on. The future, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Disaster. Alright, let's go on to... Um, relationship advice. Two hours ago posted. My, uh, my wife, who's 23 and he's 25, got into an argument. I left to cool off. She invited another man over shortly after I left. Was she planning on doing what I think she was? Uh, you already know she was, which is why you're thinking about it. Back in February of 22, my, my wife and I got into a pretty heated argument. Words were said and things got heated. I ended up leaving, my head, uh, leaving to head to my mom's for the night to let things cool down. I left, I left her some money and a little bit of uh, bad stuff before I left. Well, fast forward a day or so, she comes by and we start to talk. I see a phone where she'd been texting her mom, so I check it. We've been together for six years, so at this point it's never been an issue on either end. I see wh uh, where she asked her mom, I bet it would be wrong of me to get you to tell la 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 to add me on Snap so I could see if you would roll me uh, la la la. Another message that said, tell him to add me on Snap and make sure not to say anything over Facebook because OP and I still share it. This is two hours after I left. My stomach dropped. It's still in knots thinking about it. I asked her what, what it was about and she said, you were, you were the one who left. That to me sounds like she was planning something nefarious. So it broke out into another argument where she swears up and down nothing was going to happen. Then I tell her that if she felt like, she sh uh, if she felt like that, she should just leave. So, he s so she started to leave. I understand I shouldn't have said something. I didn't mean, but I didn't want her to leave. I wanted her to make me feel safe in our marriage again. I realize the error of my way is now, but I digress. I had to stop her from actually leaving. I still haven't managed to get over this, honestly. It's destroying me because this woman means everything to me. I wanted to admit it to me at this point. I'm not perfect either, but I can't keep feeling like this, so I guess I'm asking, what do you guys think? Okay, here is the top comment. Uh, yeah. Oh, you left for 11 months? No. A day and a half, I've been trying to work this out for myself for 11 months. Uh, it's been almost a year. Oh, no, no, no. She's hiding the truth. Yeah, th there you go. That's, that's, a, that's a comment. Again, basically she wanted to cheat. That's what happened. And she was trying to use that as an excuse. All right. Uh, we're going to end the video there, guys. Again, if you're new to the channel, liking the content, hit that sub, hit all for notifications. If you'd like to support me, I do have a Patreon with exclusive content. Newly revamped, guys. Patreon.com slash The Helios Blog. Just go there and subscribe. Again, it's Patreon.com slash The Helios Blog. Uh, you could also uh, throw me a donation like Tom M here. Uh, link is in the description. Thank you so much, guys, for taking the time to listen to my channel. Especially if you listen to the end of the video, I really do appreciate it. You guys are wonderful, and I will see you next time.